What's up, guys? This is Ken Zerk, Ken Zillinger, Zika Milligan, the Villain Filinoso Trilligan. We're back on Gangan Rampa 2 Goodbye to Spare. Last episode, y'all know I had messed up my throat from recording too much Gangan Rampa. But I let it heal for a bit. I recorded a little bit of P3 earlier. I, you know, after letting it heal for a bit, I feel like I'm able to record again. I mean, it still hurt, but, you know, I, I, I you know, I don't like. I at very least want to finish off this class trial before I push Dongan Rampa to the side so I can rest a bit. I at least want to finish off this class trial. So we're gonna get this we're gonna get this through it and then I'm gonna go on and take my break. Everyone who heard the announcement had gathered in front of Monokuma Rock. And soon enough. Welcome! Uh it's just what gets me with this game that messes me up is the voice acting, bro. So I, I think I'ma calm down on it for today. Is everyone here? Do you guys want to go to the class trial? Wait. Hey, jerk, hold it right there. Monami, such a what? dumb child. <laughs> <laughs> Monami, such a dumb child. Don't get in my way. You're just a dumb little sis who's short a few brain cells. Hey. My brain works just fine. I don't think it does. Hey, hey. Monokuma, what did you do with Nekomaru? I see, so you've come to avenge him. What? Avenge? That sounds like he died. <laughs> sounds like you say. Oops. Anyway. Anyway, since Nekomaru is unfortunately unavailable today, let's just say he's absent. Bye-bye. Uh, now then, I gotta go first. <laughs> Hold on, I won't let you escape. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, did you hear what he said? Huh? Don't worry about it. There's no way Nekomaru is dead. He's trying to piss us off. Damn it! Of course he's not dead. There's no way. Not in a million years. Well... More importantly, it's best if we worry about ourselves for now. <laughs> if something happens here, if something happens here, every one of us except Nakumara will die. <laughs> Why are you so excited about that? How about it? Who knows? Maybe I'm just looking forward to seeing poetic justice prevail. You are not Kendrick Lamar or Tupac Shakur. What do you what are you saying, fiend? <laughs> You'll find out soon enough. See? Then let's go. I'm gonna do it! All right, all right, let's hurry and get this over with. Yeah, you're right. Whew. I might have to stop voice acting altogether until I get better. All, all the, all these tone changes and all of that. Ooh, it's, it's getting to me. We stepped onto the escalator and ascended toward the gapping mob Monokuma Rock, and that's when I suddenly noticed it. I noticed our lined up silhouettes kept getting smaller and smaller, but I can't turn back now. If I turn back, I won't be able to press forward. And when everyone was inside Monokuma Rock, man, I'm finna eat some food after this. The elevator began its descent as usual, but nobody said a word. As we stood there trying to figure out what to say to each other, the elevator descended deeper and deeper. And when it descended as far as it could go, it finally stopped. They got worms on their head. The elevator doors opened slowly, almost tantalizingly so. Light poured through the other side, eroding the boundaries of the darkness. And I walked into that place. My, my, it feels pretty toothless with all these empty seats. Well, two people got killed at the same time, and Nekomaru's not here either. Is Nekomaru really not participating? If he's alive, you should invite him. No, no. Why bother? What? Well, now. Now then, let's begin. Yahoo! It's the beginning of the long-awaited class trial. Please enjoy it to your heart's content. Oh. And so the curtain to the third class trial was about to begin. Ah, Ibuki! Ibuki Miyota, the ultimate musician. She was really loud, but she was the mood maker of our group. When I was with her, all of my pain and suffering just seemed to melt away. Hiyoko Sayanji, the ultimate traditional dancer. Just from looking at her adorable face, you'd never know she was actually selfish and foul-mouthed. But she was trying to change herself. 
and she was desperately trying to come to terms with Mahiru's death. The person who killed those two is among us. I definitely can't believe it. Dang! But whether I believe it or not is irrelevant. Unless I figure out the truth, I won't be able to escape from this hell. That's why I must find out no matter the cost. For our sake. For our friend's sake. For Ibuki and Hiyoko's sake. And so the curtain to the third class trial was about to begin. Open. This life-threatening trial billowing with hope and despair has begun. I like how they have the billowing with hope and despair instead of what they had last time because it kind of shows like it gives an idea it, it kind of shows like the the somewhat importance of what's his name uh nagito because nagito is always talking about the the relationship between hope and despair i, I find that a little hard sometimes i find myself a little hard all right I don't too much remember everything, now but then, we can get into begin it. With a simple explanation of the class trial. During the class trial, you will present your arguments for who the killer is and vote for who done it. Who done it? If you vote correctly, then only the blackened will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong person, I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and that person will earn the right to leave this island. Oh well, who cares about this boring explanation? Let's get on with it already! I don't mind starting the trial, but I don't really have a grasp of how the case played out. You know, because I was asleep the whole time. <laughs> Even if you do grasp it, you're just gonna confuse the heck out of us, aren't you? But Nagito's not alone. I don't really get it either. You're fine. Your head's empty anyway. Kazuichi, what's your issue? Huh. What's wrong with that? Nothing's wrong with it, Akana. You're perfect how you are. Listen up. The emptier your head, the more dreams you can stuff inside it, you know? That's facts. You're perfect how you are, Akana. Okay? You're, you're perfectly fine with a head empty, no thoughts. Anyway, we shouldn't <sighs> proceed with the trial if those two can't participate in the arguments. Since he's the first witness... Why don't we ask Hajime to explain the incident and the sequence of events? I crack it. Then, let's start with when we split into the hospital team and motel team because of the despair disease. The hospital team consisted of Nagito, Ibuki, and Akane, who were infected, and Mikan, Fuyuhiko, and me. The other five on the motel team were myself, Gundam, Kazuichi, Chiaki, and Hyoko. Spending the night at the hospital was prohibited. So Hajime and I had to sleep at our cottages. I woke up at my cottage on the day the incident happened. Mikan came by to wake me up and told me that Nagito had recovered from his symptoms. We immediately headed over to the hospital, and after we confirmed his recovery, I made Mikan rest in the on-call room since she hadn't slept all night while I waited in the hospital lobby. Okay. And then I saw the incoming signal light on the surveillance camera blinking before our scheduled time. When I pressed the button to turn on the monitor, what appeared on screen was a video of someone wearing a hospital gown and a hint bag on their head, climbing a stepladder. Amazing! That's such a hard pounding story! What? And then what did you do, Hajime? Nagito, please shut up. I, I tried to stop them, of course. I rushed out of the hospital and ran to where the video was being recorded, the music venue. But it was too late. By the time I arrived, the person wearing the hint bag on their head was already hanging from the ceiling. I thought I should tell the others right away, so I headed to the motel. Why the motel? Because it was close to the music venue, and unlike the hospital, there were more able-bodied people there. At least, that's what I thought, but the only person who came with me was Chiaki. But I remember feeling a little relieved because not long after, we met up with Mikan and Fuyuhiko. Okay. We were also looking for Ibuki since she disappeared from our sight. After I rested for a bit, I started counting everyone at the hospital. And then I noticed Ibuki was gone. So I, I sprinted out of the hospital. Coincidentally, I ran into Fuyuhiko. So I fled with him in very 
Mysterious Ways to see if he could help me out. Mysterious Ways? N and that's what I'm saying. Don't say it like that and confuse people. After I heard from those two that Ibuki disappeared, I had a feeling she was the person wearing the hemp bag. So I immediately led them to the music venue. Okay. But the door wouldn't open. Since we had no other option, the four of us broke down the door. And when that happened, we didn't just find Ibuki's body. We also found Hiyoko's. And not just that. Her body was taped to a pillar. That's when we heard the body discovery announcement. Not once, but twice in a row. And so we decided to lower the hanged body, didn't we? When we removed the hemp bag, just as we feared, it was Ibuki. So that's how the case played out. Thank you. I understood it very easily. Well, it's clear what the problem with this case is. When Hajime left the music venue, who... Wait, how do I know anything Hajime just said is true? Huh? Sorry, I'm only being impartial right now. The story I just heard is clearly suspicious. Hajime, if you're the only one who saw the hanging video and the first one to discover Ibuki's body, then you could be lying as much as you want right now, right? Lie? Why would I lie? Obviously. So you could make us ignore what might be an inconvenient truth for you. Do you doubt me? If you're not lying, I would like you to prove it. How? Come on, try to prove it to me. Prove you're not the killer. Nagito, I'm about sick of you. Just as Kazuichi said, Nagito's the kind of guy who just confused us to make the matters worse. Dang it, I shouldn't even explain it to Nagito. I'm in trouble now thanks to that. Hold on. Scrap a thick paper. Hajime's testimony is clearly suspicious. If Hajime's testimony is a lie, then the fact that Ibuki hung herself... That would also be a lie. I don't think I can deny that possibility. After all, Hajime is the only witness. Why would Hajime lie? Well, obviously, because he's the killer. Did Hajime kill both of them? The fact that the bodies were imitating the movie. Oh! Means it probably is Hajime's fault. Invitation ticket. I got it. I'm not the killer. It's a contradiction. Not yeah. Not just us just being a jerk, bro. Cause he knows I don't know. The fact that the bodies were imitating the movie. Yeah. No, that's wrong. Cause you know I didn't watch the movie. Killer. I mean, there's no way I'd be able to imitate that movie. Of course you're not. I already knew that. Nagito, I'm sick of you. Please commit suicide. Huh? Huh? Before the incident, Hajime had never watched that movie. His invitation ticket is proof of that. Each person only received one ticket, and they're marked with a stamp that shows the date and time. Isn't that right, Monokuma? Yes. No mistakes there. Which means there's no way Hajime, who never saw the movie, could commit murders that imitated it. Or did anyone tell him what happens in the movie? No, oh my goodness. Of course no one did, right? Hold on a sec. You're the one who brought this up in the first place. Just being a jerk, bro. Nagito, what are you doing? Well, since we're opening with your witness testimony, I thought we should solidify the foundation. It also provides a good warm-up. What warm-up? This isn't a game, you know. <laughs> Don't get mad. I just think warming up is really important. Especially since this isn't a game. What a waste of time. Well, I knew it would turn out like this anyway. Now then, since we know Hajime's testimony is reliable, let us move on to the arguments. So this means Ibuki definitely climbed the stepladder all by herself, right? Probably. Yeah, I'm positive. Then that seals it. Ibuki committed suicide. Hold on a second. If Ibuki committed suicide, then who killed Hiyoko? Hmm. 
a murder coincidentally occurring in the same place as a suicide ain't possible, huh? Like I said before, it's pretty clear what the problem with this case is. The killer murdered Hiyoko while Hajime was gone. So all we gotta do is establish who could have possibly done that. Then let's ask Hajime. How long would you say you were away from the music venue? Shoot, about 10 minutes? You've been gone for more than 10 minutes. So they killed Hiyoko and taped her up within 10 minutes? There's no way that's possible. That's why the killer stalled for time by making the music venue a closed room. Hmm? What do you mean a closed room? The killer blocked the venue door from the inside to try and keep us from entering right away. However, that door is the only entrance to the music venue, right? Yeah. If they blocked the door from the inside, the killer would not have been able to leave either. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Which means, when we broke down the venue door, the killer was still inside. <laughs> they were? Yeah. If that's the case, the only suspicious people are those who don't have an alibi for that time. And that's you two, Sonia and Kazuichi. <laughs> Me too? What the hell? Why's it gonna be us? I think I said it last episode, but I don't you think it was one. I, I said it was probably one of them. The others all have alibis. Chiaki, Mikan, Hajime, and I all broke down the venue door together. Gundam met up with Hajime at the motel right before that. And if Akane and Nagito were laid up in the hospital, the only person that leaves is one of you. There's another person who doesn't have an alibi. You know, Nekomaru. Me too! Hey, why are you talking like... Huh? You're kidding, right? You're not up to something weird, are you? But please stop making bad jokes. Anyway, if the killer was hiding inside the venue, we should obviously doubt the people who don't have alibis. What a freaking way of backing us into a wall. Is this his professional skill? Man, we're just trying to live. The killer was inside the music venue. Fuyuhiko obviously thinks so, but is that really it? killer was still inside the music venue by locking the door from the inside they tried to keep us from getting in hmm it seems they were trying to stall for time how did they lock the door that door should not have had a lock the lock was on the floor in front of the door are you talking about the broken drumstick you can use that as a bolt to lock the door. By doing that, the killer who was hiding inside waited till we gathered together and suddenly appeared. So they look like they had just rushed over. I have seen this in serial crime dramas. That person's remark contradicts the truth. I should be able to prove that. I'm gonna I'm gonna try this. Oh, okay. No, that's wrong. That's it is. Wait, that's wrong. Wait a sec. There's also a possibility that the door was locked from the outside. From the outside. How? There was a semi-transparent glob stuck to the venue door. Maybe that's what they used. Semi-transparent glob, like rubber, maybe. Wasn't rubber at all. It was glue. Maybe. Okay, I got it. Semi-transparent glob. Must have been glue. Glue? Yeah, I think so too. It had a firm gel-like chewiness, and I could smell workshop chemicals the moment I put it in my mouth. Why did you do Based that? Based on all that, I'm certain it was glue. I didn't know glue was edible. I believe it is not something one typically eats. You look like a glue eater. That glue was only applied to the areas where both doors touched. By pouring it in the gaps of the closed door, it must have sealed the venue door from the outside. And thanks to that, a glob of glue was left where the door was stuck. Yep, it fits perfectly. But if you just stick them together with glue, you 
be able to break down the door easily, you know? That doesn't really matter. The killer only did that to make us think the door was locked from the inside. What'd you say? First of all, didn't that drumstick we found seem really obvious? Almost unnaturally so? It was so obvious that it makes more sense to think the killer placed it as a diversion. Are you saying the drumstick was a trap the killer set on purpose? Then I... I totally fell for that fucking trap. <laughs> Stupid. Apologize to Miss Sonia and me. However, you're not allowed to slice open your stomach this time. In a quarrel, both sides are to blame. That's why it's better to... Shut up. During the 10 minutes Hajime left the venue, the killer murdered Hiyoko and created a closed space. And they also taped her up after killing her, right? Even quick work has limits. Oh, what unimaginable speed for a slow poke like me. If they couldn't have done it while Hajime was away from the venue, they must have done it earlier than that. Earlier. But when Hajime got to the venue, only Ibuki's body was there, right? What if they already had killed her? And all they needed to do after that was just tie her up. And when you went back with everyone else, Kyoko's body was there too, right? But it's possible that the body was just revealed at that time, when Kyoko was actually killed earlier. Yeah. Of course, the body wasn't revealed on its own. The killer did that too. Here, I have proof. What's up? Hmm. Oh, the scrap, scrap of paper. paper. Is that what we found in the baton lighting at the music venue? That's right, but just what is this scrap anyway? Sucking the baton lighting at the music venue. I should be able to figure out what it is. Oh, oh, crap, crap, crap. I don't remember what it was called. Wait, I don't remember what it was called, though. I know what it is, but I don't remember what it was called. All right, bro. I'll just have to try. I'll just have to try my luck. Okay. What? Wrap wrapping paper. Wrapping? No. Okay. No, it's not L. What? No. What? Come on. What? What? I don't know what. Wallpaper, wallpaper, wallpaper. There is entirely too much chaos. What the freak? Y'all doing too much. Scrap. Isn't it part of the wallpaper in the storage room? Yeah. In the music venue storage room, there should have been black wallpaper that's the same color as that scrap. There was also a tear along the edge of the wallpaper, wasn't there? If so, you're right. You overlay the scrap that was caught on the lighting, tear in the wallpaper. See? It fits perfectly. Does it? I see. So the scrap that was caught on the baton lighting was originally part of the wallpaper. And what's wrong with that? Does it have something to do with Yoko's body disappearing? A mere nobody like me isn't important enough to answer that. But if you guys were exceptional enough to identify that scrap of paper, you can figure this out easily. Part of the wallpaper I found in the storage room. Is it connected to the sudden appearance of Hiyoko's body? If I trace it back from there, the answer should become clear. Let's give it a try. A logic jump, logic dive hate this actually i don't it's actually kind of cool it's actually pretty cool it's just like the hit boxes suck that's it the hit boxes are terrible in this game and i'm kind of stupid Ooh. all right what's the question why did yoko's body suddenly disappear it was hidden Oh, I freaking okay, bro. It was brought there. Somebody had to have brought it there, right? I mean, yeah, I'm sure it was hidden. 
But even if it was hidden, somebody had to have brought it there, right? They had to have got... I think me and the game just thinks differently, bro. I think we just think too differently. That's what it is. Because even if the body is hidden, which I am sure it was, I agree that it was hidden. It would still have to be brought to the crime scene. What did the killer use to hide her body? Probably the wallpaper. I don't have to jump over the yellow, do I? I don't remember if I don't remember if I fell through it or not. D oh my goodness, these freaking bro, these hitboxes are terrible. How was the killer able to hide her body with the wallpaper? They formed a They formed a wall. They formed a wall. I said they formed a wall. I mean, I don't really know. I'm just guessing here. Okay. They really want me to kill myself. Like, this is annoying. They're asking these questions I just don't know the answer to. It's like, there's no like, they don't, there's no actual thinking behind this. They're just like, hey bro, hey, figure it out. It's all coming together. Is it? Is it really coming together? It feels like all of that was just kind of pulled out because we didn't. Got it. Kyoko's body was hidden before we found it. No crap. We know that. But it would have taken quite a long time to tape up a hidden body. But I guess what you call it? I guess it does make sense that it was wrapped around. That means she was already taped up. It was dark. We just didn't see it. So I guess that makes sense. Yeah. But oh my goodness, y'all could have did a little bit more to help me reach that conclusion. Y'all just asked me the question and expected me to know. No, the body was already taped up and the killer hit it, along with the pillar using the wall. What? They hit the pillar? Yeah, by wrapping the wallpaper around the pillar, the killer was able to create a slightly larger pillar. So when I first discovered Ibuki's body, Hyoko's body was already there. However, because it was concealed within a slightly larger pillar, I didn't realize that at the time. Well, that's understandable. I mean, it makes sense that you'd notice Ibuki's body right away. So they used the baton lighting on the ceiling to hang the wallpaper? The baton lighting forms a perfect circle around the pillar. So using it to hang the wallpaper totally fits. Then, the reason the wallpaper was covered in so many stickers is to make it look like that pillar. That's how they hid Hyoko's body, and then peeled off the wallpaper as soon as I left the music room. But the killer made a mistake. They accidentally ripped off a piece of the wallpaper. And because of that, a scrap was left on the baton lighting. The killer must have been in a hurry. Their plan took too long. Hajime could have walked in on them. But going to the trouble of hiding the body and the pillar is very bold and risky. But the crime itself would be much easier to pull off since they don't have much to do while Hajime's gone. They just have to peel off that wallpaper and stash it in the storage room. It's not that big of a deal. Then, when was Hyoko actually killed? Good point. And on that note, it's about time we shed some light on those imitation murders. Um, you mentioned imitation murder more than once. But what is that? Are you kidding me? You haven't seen my masterpiece? The Wizard of Monomy 2.5D? That movie was so peak. Hey, don't put my likeness in your movies without my permission. Shut up, Monomy. You're pretty noisy for someone who eats mothballs. I don't eat mothballs. I just enjoy looking at them. I knew it. There are so many similarities. It must have been intentional. Ibuki's death by hanging matches the Scarecrow's death from the movie. Not just that, but Hyoko getting taped up after her death matches the lion's death. 
It's as if both crimes were replicas of scenes from the movie. Although, the mutilated Tin Man was omitted. But why did the killer go to all this trouble in the first place? Based on what we know, the reason the killer chose these imitations isn't that difficult to figure out. Why? To mix up the killing order. The reason the killer imitated two of the murders from the movie was so he'd mix up the killing order. Then, Kyoko was actually killed before Ibuki? A valid line of reasoning. Yeah, it's valid. The condition of Ibuki's body suggests that as well. What do you mean? <laughs> if you're going to cry and beg like that, then I guess I'll hear about the condition of Ibuki's What are you body. on about? I'm not even crying. I'll let you sob as much as you want later. Just hurry up and tell me before I change my mind. What a jerk! Oh, I see. You want me to explain it to you, right? Because you don't understand what I'm saying, right? Chiaki getting paid. An even bigger jerk? Impossible! Look, Ibuki died because she hanged herself, right? That means when she was still alive, her feet were touching the floor. What's wrong with that? But it seems Ibuki she had blood on her shoes. Yoko was killed. That would mean Kyoko was killed before Ibuki. <laughs> How light. Your words are so light, as light as the silk's feather. <laughs> your opponent is out of your league. It is too absurd to try to perplex me so inadequately. Shut up! Man, he's getting annoying again. First and foremost, you claim Ibuki's feet were touching the floor when Hiyoko was killed. How can a low-class creature with no psychic abilities like you know something like that? Because she was doing something that's only possible if her feet were on the floor. Look, she mad. It seems you suffer from a pathetic delusion. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You're one to talk. This continues. She's gonna talk in circles. I think it's best if we clarify her status when Hyoko was killed. Bro, she had blood on her. Bro, she had blood on her boots. When Hyoko died, Ibuki's feet were on the floor. I am telling you to present your evidence. Did you see her walking? If her feet were on the floor. Was there any sign she stepped on something? Yeah! I agree with that! I agree with that! Just as Sonya said, Ibuki stepped on something. That something was blood. There were faint blood stains on the soles of her slippers. That is not Ibuki's blood, right? She suffered no external injuries. Then it's Hiyoko's blood! Hiyoko's only wound was a fatal slice on her neck. And she died almost instantly, right? If Ibuki stepped on her blood... It means Ibuki was still standing when Hyoko was mortally wounded. Which means Ibuki was still alive at the exact moment Hyoko was killed. Don't underestimate the power of the evil eye! <laughs> Is that it? A shepherd dressed in his Sunday's finest still reeks of lamb, Hajime Hinata. Shut up! Does that mean you have a rebuttal? Does that mean you have a rebuttal? Hmm. That's a good line. But, are you sure you're sure? If I show you how serious I am, this world might be destroyed, you know! You're so frightened, you can't even make a sound. It seems you've realized our difference in status. However, the time for conviction starts now. You better entertain me to the fullest. This guy makes me mad. He makes me mad. He makes me mad. You're saying the blood on Ibuki's feet belonged to Hiyoko? Ha! Impossible! Try to remember the crime scene. There was no can't step on board that was never there. <laughs> See you, nice nightmare.
You're saying the blood on Ibuki's feet belongs. Ha! Impossible. Try to remember the crime scene. There was no blood. Get out of here! Allow me to cut through, Allow those, me to words. Cut through those words. That's not it. The reason there was no blood on the floor is because the killer wiped it away afterward. Don't say such foolish things. You don't have proof of that at all. Yes, I do. You look closely. There's a streak on the floor where blood was wiped away. When the killer tried to hide Yoko's body, they probably cleaned the blood at the same time, but... Ibuki must have already stepped in it, and the killer probably didn't even realize it. The reason they wiped off the blood on the floor was so we'd mix up the order of the murders, right? Even if they're able to hide Kyoko's body, it'd be bad if her blood was left out in the open. Plus, Ibuki's body was left out in the open, and it wasn't bleeding from any open wounds at all. Yoko's body was probably wrapped in duct tape to stop her bleeding. Actually, the bleeding will stop once the heart stops beating, so I don't think they had to go that far. Aside from Miko, none of us were aware of that fact, so the killer probably did not know it either. Maybe... The heater was running inside the music venue, so it would screw with Mikan's autopsy? Mm-hmm. That's right! I didn't know the time of death because of the heater! The time of death wasn't mentioned in the Monokuma file, just to keep concrete evidence for us. Yep. Since we have all this evidence, there's no one else who wants to object, right? Then it's decided. Yoko was killed before Ibuki. It appears that... It is wiser to retreat for now. Please shut up. Thank you. Fine then. But regardless of good or evil, there's no deceit in upholding one's convictions. Can't you just shut up and back off? I'm saying. Now then, let us resume our debate. Ah, wait a sec. There's something I want to run by Monokuma first. Huh? Again? Mm -hmm. Didn't something like this happen last time too? Hey, if the victim actually committed suicide. What are we supposed to do? Suicide. The same as always. You have to vote for who the killer is. Think about it. A suicide means you've killed the most important existence of all. Yourself. Unfortunately, that means there's no blacken to punish. But I guess in a pinch, I can always punish Monami. Yes. Why me? Um, Nagito, what do you mean? If the victim actually committed suicide. Well, I mean, I understand Yoko's death, but I'm wondering if Ibuki was really murdered. For example, it's possible Ibuki killed Yoko and then committed suicide due to a guilty conscience, right? That's totally impossible! Then she never would have killed her to begin with! She was afflicted by the despair disease, remember? That means anything can happen. But if Ibuki's the killer, she wouldn't have been able to falsify the sequence of the murders, right? After Hajime saw the hanged body, the sudden appearance of Hiyoko's body soon after means the killer had to be alive at that time. Then she was alive! <gasps> when Hajime first discovered Ibuki, she was just pretending to be dead. If she waited until Hajime left, that's when she could have made her move and mess with the crime scene. She hanged herself! Remember? There's no fucking way she could have faked that. And if she was going to fake her death, I think she wouldn't have chosen hanging. Her body would have been defenseless in that state. If anyone touched her, that alone would have ruined her plan. Hmm, I see. So that means there's no doubt that someone killed those two. I'm glad. Now I'm free to search for the killer. I'm glad. What, what the heck? Ah, there's still one more issue on my mind. If Ibuki didn't commit suicide, just what was that video Hajime saw? Huh? According to that video you saw, Ibuki was by herself when she climbed the stepladder, right? Then does that mean someone forced her to do it? The forest? Perhaps they used hypnotism or something? I don't know anything about that. Don't say it all proud. Uh, uh, um, 
Putting that aside, it seems obvious that the killer did something. The despair disease. Did y'all already forget what she was afflicted with? Literally, she would do anything you asked her to do. That was her disease. If you taught her to hang herself, she would have just went on a hunger so. My bad talking like this. I, I, my, my throat hurt. So, maybe we should figure out who was able to do that was. So, an alibi. Then our plan is to destroy the weakest alibi. Since Hajime has seen the video, it is clear what time the crime took place. Uh, but just to be sure, that surveillance camera doesn't have a record function, right? It's a cheap-ass surveillance camera, you know? There's no way it has some kind of sweet recording feature. Then, the video Hajime saw was actually fly? What time did Hajime see that video? I saw it at the hospital, right before Monokuma's morning announcement. And I saw the body at the music venue a little after Monokuma's announcement. Hmm. So Ibuki hanged herself right before Monokuma's announcement. And since we established that Yoko was killed before Ibuki, that means the time that the murders occurred was before and during the announcement. Then we just have to find the person who doesn't have an alibi during that time? Now then, I shall issue my decree. Let Operation Destroy the Weakest Alibi commence! Ah, uh, let's kill that alibi! We can exclude the sick people like me and Akane, right? And what about the others? Right before the morning announcement, I was totally sleeping in my motel room! I think everyone at the motel was doing that. So everyone who stayed at the motel doesn't have an alibi. What about you guys? I was where I was supposed to be, my own cottage. That's not an alibi. Aside from those afflicted by the disease, if nobody has an alibi then, Operation Destroy the Weakest Alibi has failed. Person who doesn't have an alibi for that time. Why was he sleeping in a motel room? We can exclude the sick people like if me it's, Connie, right? If it's right before the right before the morning announcement, I was totally sleeping in my motel room. Wait. Wait, this is what I want to know. Why was he sleeping in the motel room right before the morning announcement? Kazuichi is the one that picks it up. Picks up the phone right before the morning announcement every day. So why wasn't he there to pick up the phone? He's supposed to be picking up the phone, but he was sleeping. That sounds like a lie. We can exclude the but I guess I'm wrong. My bad. I was where I was supposed. That's not enough. Aside from those afflicted, if nobody has an alibi. Oh. No, that's wrong. Mikana's an alibi. Hold on. Not all of us are missing an alibi. In fact, Mikan and I both have alibis. You. You two have alibis? Up until I saw that hanging video, Mikan and I were actually together for a while. We even woke up together that morning. Yo! Hey, what kind of situation is that? <laughs> I accidentally fell asleep on top of Hajime. Too much info. <laughs> yeah, it's not like that. She just came to tell me Nagato's condition had improved. And we went to the hospital together afterward. So we were together until right before the announcement. I get it. You guys have alibis. If that's the case, the killer must be someone else. I ain't a killer. It's better if we think about it like that. The killer decided to falsify the murder sequence to hide the actual time of the crime anyway. So it's inevitable that an alibi for both before and during the morning announcement would be very important. Hmm. It feels like Operation Destroy the Weakest Alibi has backed us into a corner instead. Sonya, we need to hit never mind on every single f opinion you come up with. Because you, you, you're you screwing us up right now. But committing an imitation murder, is that really all it was? Huh? Faking the time the crime occurred by falsifying the murder sequence, hiding their alibi in the process. 
Was that the only reason the killer made both bodies imitate the movie? Are you saying there was another reason? I feel really bad for confusing you guys so much. But that's how I feel. I think the killer had a completely different reason for falsifying the murder sequence. Had a different reason. If that's the case, are we still in the killer's trap? Inside a trap set by one of us? If so, then whose and what kind of trap is it? Oh my lord. This is this class rock gonna be pretty quick? We're only 50, we're only 50 minutes in. Hiya. Why, hello there, Monami. The moss balls sure look tasty today. Stop it. Stop, don't care, drag me as someone who lives off moss balls. And here's some chance time. Whoa, 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 what's that? Now then, Monami's appeal time starts now. Huh, appeal time? Your kind-hearted big brother is gonna give you a chance to reclaim your honor. Good luck. Show those jerks who treat you like a red-headed stepchild who's boss. That's 99% your fault. While you're whining, while you were whining, your time's already running out. So please make your appeal simple. About 30,000 words or so. That's too long. It'll just be a boring appeal. Come on, if your appeal is successful, there might be merchandise opportunities heading your way. Um, then I'm Usami, magical miracle girl Usami. I'm an itty bitty girl who's sweet like milk. Jeez, and I thought a certain robot little sister was supposed to be the best. What a disappointment. <laughs> um... Who are you talking about? I have no clue whatsoever. Bro, Monami's theme goes so dummy. The reason the killer did an imitation murder is a reason other than falsifying the murder sequence. Does something like that even exist? Huh. It suddenly got quiet in here. Shut up! Did I confuse you? If so, I wish I could die from self-loathing. Please die! Man, this again. If that's the case, it would have been just dandy if they had gone ahead and killed me too. If that happened, the imitation would have been perfect. So why didn't they do that? Well, it's against the rules to kill three people in the first place. That rule is too harsh. I couldn't get killed because of that. Seriously, just shut up already! Shut up forever! But I'm sure <laughs> Bro, I shut up! Him. He's totally right. It feels incomplete. Because they didn't kill three people like the movie did? That's only because of Monokuma's rule. Maybe maybe that was the plan from the beginning to throw us off. It's not just that. Come on. Try to remember the content of the movie. About the lion that got killed second. That's the one Hiyoko's body was imitating, right? Hmm. Even though we're calling it an imitation. The lion was actually pinned by arrows, right? But Hiyoko's body was suspended by common household duct tape. Did they not have arrows? Maybe they just used a common substitute because it was too difficult to imitate the arrows. Well, that's probably it, but that attitude is what makes this feel incomplete. If falsifying the murder sequence was the killer's plan from the very beginning, they should have taken steps to properly imitate it. But if we never realized it was a half-assed imitation, their entire plan would have been completely useless. What are you trying to say? Are you saying the imitation wasn't planned? I'm saying... Yoko's murder wasn't. What? Oh! Yoko's murder wasn't planned. Um, I understand that imitation wasn't enough, but aren't you making a bunch of us? It's not just the poor imitation. There are also other strange details. Strange details? Like what? Like, for example, why did Yoko go to the music venue? Sonya, never mind. Can talk about that. 
So, you're saying the truth behind Hyoko's murder is hidden? I have no freaking clue what you're trying to say! However, this is getting quite interesting. My four dark devas of destruction are getting riled up. Why Hyoko went to the music venue? That's the key to all this. I need to find that out no matter the cost. Come on, Sonya, Sonya. No. Why did Kyoko go to the music venue? There's no way he'd know that. Maybe the killer summoned her. If that's not it, maybe she got abducted by the killer. No, maybe. She went of her own free will. I agree with that. I agree with that. It's just as Sonya said. She went to the music venue of her own free will. So, exactly as I assumed. If no one called for her, then why did she go? Yoko locked herself in her room because she was being overly cautious of the despair disease, you know? I don't think a person like that would leave their room just because someone called for them. There's no way she got abducted? Kyoko locked the room she was staying in before she went out. If she was forcibly taken from her room, there's no way she would have had time to lock it. The killer could have locked her door, right? Just to hide the fact Kyoko got abducted. Then they couldn't have hidden her room key that deep in her kimono. They would have put it somewhere more obvious. Otherwise, there's no point in messing with the crime scene if nobody finds the key. At the time, you were the one who actually took out the key, right? Then something like that... I won't lose! Oh my goodness! Akane! You Are don't... You saying my gut was wrong? Yes! This my first and last highlight of the day. Why won't you just let me shine already? No, that's not the issue. Shut up! Enough with your fancy talk. I'll shut you up right now. Why are you being a problem? Sonya's account. Hiyoko was locked inside her room, right? She definitely got abducted or something. The killer forced their way into Hiyoko's room. Forcibly abducted her. The girl is so small and weak looking. And that's why the killer targeted her. No! But Hiyoko's room was locked. The key was deep inside her kimono, remember? It's more likely that Hiyoko locked the door herself. The killer was the one who locked the door! So what if the key was in her kimono? Maybe the killer just put it there later! No! There's no reason for the killer to put the key in Hiyoko's kimono. The killer probably didn't realize she even had the key. Hold on! Try remembering Hiyoko's body! Her kimono is only one reason her kimono would be that messed up. She fought the killer! No! Allow me to cut through those words! Allow me to cut through those words! The reason Hiyoko's kimono was messed up was because she wasn't able to properly wear it. Wear her kimono? Yeah, it's also the reason why she decided to go out on her own. Yoko seemed to be really struggling with wearing her kimono. I believe that was one of the reasons she locked herself in her room. That is why I informed her. I told her that there was a full-length mirror at the music venue, and I suggested that she use it. Then, the reason her kimono was messed up wasn't because she fought the kill. Yeah, she went to the venue on her own just to fix her messed up kimono. I, I get it. I lost. Boil me, burn me, take off my clothes. No. Do whatever you want to me. No, you're 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 good. Okay, you're good. Hajime, now's your chance. Make her admit defeat, or better yet, make her do a little something something. No. Hell no. Then, the killer probably couldn't have assumed that Hiyoko would go to the music venue. Though that may not apply to Sonya, since she provided Hiyoko with that information. Hey, Sonya, are you the killer? Though I knew she would go there, there is no way I could have predicted when she would arrive. Don't go doubting this Sonya, you cretin. I'll put you and your hamsters six feet under. 
Kazuichi. It seems you have quite the fashion sense. Do you want me to incinerate your clothes? Perhaps I could do that while you're wearing them. Gundam, please stop! For his sake. Huh? What do you mean <laughs> for my sake? Let's be real, bro. Gundam will clap Kazuichi. Of course. I've already overlooked no less than 10 opportunities to kill you. Even if the killer couldn't predict it, why did Hyoko get killed in the music venue? She probably witnessed some sus suspicious activities. The only thing I can think of is it was an unfortunate coincidence. Coincidence? When she went to the venue by herself, she was probably just unlucky and walked in on the crime scene. She was killed so there wouldn't be any loose ends? It probably happened when the killer was preparing to kill Ibuki. The killer most likely had already placed the hemp bag over her head. And without hesitation... Killed Hyoko. Because the killer used that coincidence for their crime, it made this case even trickier. That's the reason they imitated the movie to falsify the murder scene. Okay. Which means that low-down scoundrel didn't plan on committing imitation murders at first. Then what was the killer actually planning to do? They've been cunning this far. There's no way they'd kill Ibuki without a plan. They wanted to make it look like a suicide. Do you have any ideas? Damn, we don't know the most important part. Killer's plan was the very beginning. I'm pretty sure we're very, very close. Hey, Nagito, any ideas? Hey, how long are you gonna stay quiet? Oh, am I allowed to speak? <laughs> I'm so happy I'm getting goosebumps. Everyone actually needs help from scum like me. <laughs> Bro, actually shut up. So what do you think? I was thinking about it while I had my mouth shut. But now I'm finally able to come to a conclusion. Ibuki definitely didn't commit suicide. Huh? What are you talking about? I thought there might be a possibility that she faked her death and tampered with the crime scene. But now I remember, there was blood on Ibuki's slippers. So if she faked her death and walked around the music venue tampering with the crime scene, there'd be bloody footprints left in various places throughout the venue. So that's why I think there's no way she faked her death. There's no way Ibuki committed suicide. You know, we already finished talking about that a while ago. Uh, really? That's <laughs> annoying. I guess I should just awkwardly laugh about it then. <laughs> Are you freaking kidding me? There's no limit to how useless you can be. Hey, he's more useful than you. No, wait a minute. If you be, if you, if you can have blood on her feet, there'd be footprints all over the place if she kept walking around. Strange. That's very strange. This is strange. What's strange? I see. It's not something we finished talking about. Those footprints. There's still an important clue left that we completely overlooked. Just as Nagito said, if she had blood on her feet, she would have left footprints. Then why were there any? Why weren't there any footprints on there? Oh, why weren't there footprints on the step ladder? I can prove it with this. Oh, I was finishing a sentence. Okay. Use the step ladder to hang herself. It's strange that there weren't any footprints on it. I was finishing the sentence. I thought I was. I thought I was trying to find an answer to his question. Huh? There weren't. Yeah, that step ladder was completely clean. No footprints or blood stains at all. <laughs> You notice such a small detail. How amazing! This is truly the talent of a chosen ultimate. What are you talking about? You are obviously leading us to this. That's why you brought up the suicide topic after all this time. Now I can tell Komaida, you're definitely someone I, I shouldn't underestimate. But didn't you say you saw that video of the Buki climbing step ladder? Then. I think there's no doubt that she really did climb it. Unless there was something funny about that video. I see. So there was some kind of trick arranged in that video, hmm? But that's something only Hajime would know. 
since he's the only one who saw that video. Just as I thought, it comes down to that. The mystery surrounding this incident is contained in that video. Whether or not we can reach that hidden truth, it all is all up to me. Hajime, I leave it in your hands. As long as I leave this to you, I won't tell you to do your best, but oh well. You should get started already. Yeah, I'll definitely try. If there was some hidden clue in that video, I should have seen something strange as I watched. I'm the only one who can clear that up. I'm the only one who actually saw that video. So I'm the only one who can do it. The hanging video that I saw. Based on everything we know from the debates thus far, I should be able to figure out what's strange. This is what I want to know. Is this green looking because of the filter? Or is it actually green? Damn it! Here! What's up? That's right, I remember now. There was definitely something strange about that video. Can you explain it to us? Explain it to me too, I don't know. What's strange is that step ladder I mentioned earlier. Okay. It's true that the steps of that step ladder weren't dirty, but on one side, there was a blood stain right on the left side of the step ladder. Okay. However, that contradicts the video I saw at the hospital. Oh, it's not like you could have fell into blood because there was no blood around the step ladder. So what really happened there? There weren't any blood stains on the step ladder in the video. It was completely clean. That is truly strange. If the video showed the moment of Yubuki's death, then Miyoko should have already been dead by that point. Even so, the fact is the stepladder had blood on it at the actual crime scene. The stepladder in the video was completely bloodless. Meaning Hiyoko hadn't died at the time of that video. So either the killer is just really freaking fast or Kazuichi is suspicious and he's lying about it not being able to record. And there's no way the video was recorded in advance. If that's the case, the only thing I can think of is... It's possible those two step ladders were completely different. Oh, or that, I guess. Wait, are you saying there were two step ladders? There were? But where would you find another step ladder? There was only one step ladder in the music venue. I think there was one in the storage room. And one of the step ladders was somewhere other than the music venue. <laughs> what do you mean? You're suggesting that the step ladder in the video isn't the only thing that's different. Am I right? <sighs> that's amazing, Chiaki. All that gaming has given you incredible deduction skills. Is it okay to say that? I'm so lost. Is it? They must have faked it in the hospital, right? In the hospital where they have that black curtain? Is the only thing that's different, huh? She actually said the step ladder was at a different place, but if that's the case, the only thing that's different between the video and the actual crime scene is that thing, the killer, the place where the killer did something. Oh Lord. I did not mean to do that actually. Is it faculty? Yes, yeah, faculty. I know what it is. Oh, Phi. Phi. Phi something. I don't know. File. Phi. Phil. Film. Film. Filming. 
Oh my goodness, it's moving too fast. Filming, filming, ah, filming facility? Maybe? Oh, filming location. All right, I got it. Filming location, okay. Oh my goodness. Besides the step ladder, the filming location must have been different too. What do you mean? I mean the video I saw was not filmed at the music venue. It was filmed somewhere else. But the hospital monitor is supposed to display footage captured by the music venue camera, you know? Then there's a possibility that the killer also tampered with the surveillance camera unit. In order to show us that they filmed the video at the music venues instead of somewhere else. What did the killer do to try to do to that surveillance camera unit? Logi dive. I have no clue, bro. I know I complain about it a lot in Trigger Happy Havoc. How I was like figuring all this stuff out too early. But bro, it, I'm not gonna lie. I might be a hypocrite because it's a little annoying just not knowing what's going on. I might... Y'all want me to kill myself, don't y'all? Which part of surveillance camera unit the killer tamper with? Had to have been the camera, right? I mean, cause think about it. The camera, we had the, we saw where the monitor was. The monitor was still in the place. Yeah, we saw the monitor. We know where the monitor is. We saw it. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What do they think this is? This isn't run. Yo! How? The killer tampered with the camera at the music venue at the hospital. Music venue. They tamper with the music venue camera. Come on, bro. That's totes ob. As the popular kids like to say. Oh, my lord. I'm over here navigating. Aren't what the free? Y'all don't think y'all was doing too much with this? Like, bro. Okay. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. What did the killer do to the camera footage? From the, they took it with them. It's all coming together. Is it? I don't know what this means. I mean, I understand what you're saying, but I don't know what this That's means it. for the case. The killer just brought the camera from the music video. With it, they made me think it was a live feed from the venue when it was actually from somewhere else. Then, only the monitor was left in the music venue? Yes, at least when I first discovered Ibuki's body. But when Hyoko's body appeared, the killer probably put the camera back too. That means you should have realized that from the start, and made this easier on all of us. He did discover the body. I doubt his attention was focused on the camera. Well, that's true, but... In order to hide that the camera was missing, one more thing to the remaining monitor. He destroyed it. I see. The killer smashed the monitor to pieces, destroying it. As long as it was in pieces, you wouldn't be able to tell if the camera was actually there or not. My attention was so focused on the body that even I couldn't have noticed something like that. Okay. And the moment Hajime left the music venue, the killer put back the camera they took. And they destroyed it and left that in pieces as well. It's easy to say it was filmed somewhere else, but the surveillance camera's connection wasn't that strong. 
Despite Kazuichi's desperate repair efforts, it seems it could not transmit from the hospital to the motel. The fact that it was able to connect between the hospital and the music venue is amazing enough. Which means even if it was filled in another place, as long as it was transmitted to the hospital, the range would be pretty limited. That's the case, where was it filmed to make it look like the film without the music venue? Only possibility is that place inside that building. A hangman's game. I'm finna kill myself. Wait, I'm, I'm conference, 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 conference room. Give your boy your M. Give your boy your M. Conference room. Filmed at the hospital's conference room. Okay. Huh? Conference room? But the hospital and the music venue look completely different. That's exactly why the killer did something to make those two places resemble each other. Killer did some work. Gotta make it clear what that work was. resemble the other did the conference room look like the music venue or did the music venue look like the conference room or did they make some kind of set they might have tampered with the camera i still can't believe he mixed up the filming locations hajime you're pretty stupid all right bro or did the music venue look like the conference room that must be it what the killer did was didn't they take stuff from the music venue bring it to the conference room so that the conference room looked like the music venue so how are you agreeing with what Kazuichi said that's what I'm not understanding make the music venue the crime scene look like the conference room that's what he did okay explain I'd like to know they did that by using oh, the black curtain actually, back of the stage. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Because the black curtain on the stage, I remember somebody said it was too small. It's been a minute since I freaking did the investigation. Like, I, I did the investigation last week, bro. This is a week. This is a week since the last episode. So I'm not like, since the last recording. So I, I forgot a lot of stuff. From what I remember, there used to be a really flashy curtain. My oh my goodness! I accidentally clicked it. That's right. It's so half-assed, just like Monami. Uh, why? Hold on, my bad. I'm texting my friend. Oh, yeah. Well, your face looks stupid. You don't have the right to say that to nobody, Monami. That curtain was hung so the music venue would look like a conference room. In actuality, even though the curtain in the conference room doesn't stand out, it is a black light blocking curtain that's long enough to reach the floor. I see. The conference room. Indeed, the floor of that room is... the same color as the music venue stage. So the killer chose the conference room because they realized the floor match. Matching floors, matching curtains. I guess it makes sense to mistake the two. But that's not all. There should be something else the killer did to tamper with the evidence. Probably. What did he do? The step ladder? I can prove it with this. You're referring to the candle and the music video, right? In the video I saw, a candle was used for lighting. If you think about it, it's pretty strange. The music venue has good lighting, so there's no reason to even use candlelight. But wouldn't they have done it to make it feel creepier? That might have been another reason, but the main reason was probably to tamper with evidence. 
The lighting in the conference room and the music venue are so different. They couldn't be used during filming. That's why the killer used a candle as film lighting instead. Which means... Are you saying the candle in the music venue wasn't actually used? That candle was likely placed there just to make me think it was the same candle that was used in the video. With candlelight, you can't see things in that much detail. Maybe they were going for that effect. With that cheap-ass camera, it won't capture much in a dark area. As long as this all matches up, it should be no problem to say this is the site. The video I saw wasn't filmed at the music venue. It was actually filmed at the hospital conference room. If I'd found proof that evidence in the conference room was altered, we would have reached an answer sooner. But it appears the killer already covered that up, so I didn't find anything when I went there. But there's no mistake. That's the only place within the connection range of the surveillance camera. The motel would have been too far, and the interior design of the movie theater is too distinctive. But this must be a surprising turn of events for Hajime. You never suspected that the video you saw in the hospital was being filmed in the conference room. The incident isn't happening at the scene of a crime. It's occurring in the conference room. I feel like I've heard Bayside cops say that before, but isn't it the other way around? Um, if Ibuki's hanging video was filmed at the hospital's conference room, then was Ibuki killed at the conference room too? No, that's not possible. Right after Hajime saw that video, he discovered Ibuki's body at the music venue. <sighs> that video was filmed at the conference room, but Ibuki's body was at the music venue. It means there was a fake somewhere. The fake must have been Ibuki in the conference room. See. The person wearing the hint bag in that video wasn't Ibuki. It was the killer pretending to be Ibuki. The killer put on a hospital gown, wore a hint bag on their head, and was only pretending to be the victim. By that time, the real Ibuki must have already been killed. The actual time of death must have been earlier. Probably around midnight or dawn to avoid witnesses. If they took Ibuki from the music venue to the hospital to kill her, there's no way it happened during the day. So that's what happened. Then no matter how quickly I ran, it was impossible for me to rescue Ibuki. At that moment, I was already in the killer's trap. And the one who set that trap for me was... But why did the killer go to the trouble of making a fake video just so Hajime could go to the crime scene? The reason the killer made a fake video... There's only one possibility I can think of. If I examine that possibility thoroughly, then naturally the killer's identity will reveal itself. Huh? You fiend! Are you saying you already know who the killer is? He better than me because I got no clue. That's right, I should already know. I should have already known who the killer is. I don't know! Wait, I don't know! Wait, hold on! I don't know! Wait, I don't know who it is! I'm so lost! I'm so lost! I'm so lost! I'm so lost! I... I don't... <laughs> Soda, it's you. You're the killer. Crap. I'm sorry. I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna have to go through everybody, bro. I'm gonna have to go through everybody. Uh, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start from down here, though. I'm okay. I know it's not Chiaki. So Sonia. Not Sonia. Not Sonia. Okay, I know it's not Chiaki. Mikan? You're the only one. What? You're the killer, aren't you? Oh, 
And then it makes sense. Oh, what? Like I said, aren't you the killer who murdered Ibuki and Hyoko? Don't you think that's kind of impossible? A chick like her is the killer? She couldn't even kill a fly. In fact, the fly would probably kill her first. She's right! A, a clumsy slowpoke like me killing someone? That's completely out of the question. But we're the only ones. Thanks to that video, we're the only ones who have the advantage of an alibi. An alibi? Was that the killer's goal? Now that you mention it, you guys brought that up earlier. Only Hajime and me can't have an alibi. <laughs> it's just a coincidence! But you're the only one who could have filmed that video in the hospital conference room. Is that also a coincidence? Shouldn't you get some rest already? You should be exhausted from nursing without any sleep, right? Then if you exist, I'll, I'll use the on-call room upstairs. You must be mentally exhausted, so it's better you relax in the lobby instead. At that time, you said you were going to the on-call room, but you actually went to the conference room. That's when you put on a hospital gown that you prepared in advance, put the bag on your head, and began filming. By doing that, you made up a video that showed Ibuki trying to hang herself at the music video. Showed that to me. <laughs> Furthermore, I saw that video at the hospital lot. If someone wants to go to the conference room from outside, they have to pass through the lot. So it's impossible that someone who wasn't already in the hospital went to the conference room to film. Not only that, the others in the hospital, Kane and I, were both delirious from the despair disease. So that must mean... Please wait a second! What are you saying? I think I'm the killer! That's impossible! There's no way I could kill someone! It's not literally impossible. Can't you give a better defense than that? Just shows she can't even do that. Hey, you sure this chick is really the killer? Wrong! It's totally wrong! It's not what you think! Just like Akane said, it is really hard to tie it all together. I mean, Mikan is the killer? I agree. It is truly difficult to believe someone could be killed by such a slow-witted woman. That slow-witted remark is not necessary. <laughs> it's fine. I've been like this for a long time. In a tournament for social punching bags, I easily win first place with my even I can't deny that. How many times do I have to tell you? It's impossible for me to kill someone. I am serious. Very serious. What do you say, Hajime? Do you still believe this woman is the killer? Yes! Everyone's kinging up on me. <laughs> Tricks aside, logic aside, is she really capable of doing something like this? Could it be I'm the one making a mistake? No, in fact, it'd be so much easier if I was wrong. If I have this much doubt for someone I've spent so much time with. Can you hold on a minute? Huh? Well... I know I'm being intrusive and all, and I mean, I have no place to say this. I missed all of the critical parts, and I doubt I have anything worth saying at an important time like this. What are you saying? But still, there's definitely no way I can overlook the killing this time. Huh? I thought it was suspicious all along, from the very beginning. Investigating with a suspect in mind creates a different result than investigating with no leads. 
Hey, what are you trying to say? Well, thanks to that, I was able to discover a truth that nobody else knows. Are you serious? I've been so focused on everybody else this trial. But I guess now's a good time to say it, right? You better not have kept quiet on purpose. This isn't a game, you know. Actually, this is a game. Shut up. Please don't say such controversial statements. Well, what do you know, Nagito? Well, it's nothing big, really. Only a small, decisive clue that points to the killer. Then tell us. Hey, that's a huge deal. A decisive clue. Does something like that really exist? Let's take a look, shall we? Regarding the rope Ibuki was dangling from, this rope was supplied by the supermarket, right? There weren't any ropes inside the music venue. Again with the supermarket? That place is a hot spot for criminal goods. If they got it at the supermarket, that means it was brand new, right? What's wrong with that? I want you to take a close look at this rope. And keep in mind that it's brand new. Near the middle of the rope, it's frayed, as if it was rubbed strongly. But why is it like this? The loopy booty used to hang herself is on one end of the rope, and the part of the rope that hung from the baton lighting is on the other end. Hey, you're taking too long. What's wrong with the rope being frayed? It means, well, from what I can infer, I think the rope was used like this. The killer wrapped the rope around Ibuki's neck, pulled both ends at full strength, and strangled her. The center of the rope is frayed because that's the part they used to strangle Ibuki. Don, I've been listening to you for a while, and it sounds like you knew about this rope clue all along. What exactly did you say to me during the investigation? So this rope won't be much of a clue. Then I might as well search another place. Not everyone cooperates in a class trial. Those who lie and conceal the truth will obviously be here too. Just like this case is killer. I was just copying them a little bit. More importantly, what was all that about the rope? The killer strangled Ibuki. And then? And then, I finished speaking. Huh? You didn't notice it. I thought I made the decisive clue very clear. Nagito's words contain a decisive clue. Is that really true? Oh my goodness, what the heck? Ibuki didn't die from hanging. She was strangled to death. That's basically the same thing. Though hanging and strangling seem similar, they're very different. The scars they leave would look different too. Scars? You mean the rope burn, right? But we believed it was from a hanging. Why would that be? Did we fall for someone's lie? The body at the crime scene was hanged, you know. Obviously, we'd assume it was a hanging. The Monokuma file complicates this, too. It never specified hanging or strangulation. Whoever misunderstood us to blame! That bitch, did we fall for someone's lie? That must be it! That must be it! Oh. So that's what happened. We've been falling for the killer's lie this whole time. So then I want to ask you. No doubt Ibuki's cause of death was being hanged by this rope, right? Yes, she had no external injury, so there's no doubt she died from hanging herself. I see, so Ibuki died by hanging herself. You said Ibuki hanged herself. But that was a complete lie, wasn't it, Mikan? That is... Well... 
You told us the wrong cause of death. You lied, didn't you? <laughs> you should have been able to tell the difference between hanging and strangling just by looking. You, Mikan, the ultimate nurse. Right. And you have been a great help to us so far. But even a drunk medical student can notice the difference between a hanging and strangulation. I'm not taking her side or anything, but being clumsy and unskilled in this area could lead to a mistake. She's not unskilled. She's the ultimate nurse. She's totally right. <laughs> I'm such a clumsy mess, and I got so careless. Mikan nursed me till I got better. There's no way I'm gonna doubt her. Don't you think her devotion to nursing is what helped her draw Ibuki to her death? Huh? And if not, her symptoms were still very serious and caused her to believe what anybody told her. It wouldn't surprise me if she willingly followed Mikan because she was nursing her. So, so Mikan volunteered to nurse us? Because she was planning to do this all along? That's a little... Aren't you like the thief who suspects everyone else of being thieves? I'm not a criminal. Mikan is. I mean, she's a killer, you know. You got it all wrong. Please forgive me. I'm sorry, but there's no way I can forgive you. I just can't forgive this crime at all. Um, forgiveness or not, we still have not decided if Mikan is the killer. Wait, why is he so pressed about this specifically? <sighs> hmm, I see. You guys are kind. Well, if that's the choice everyone makes, then the only thing I can do is back off, I guess. But is that really okay? Is that everyone's hope? You're friggin' annoying! If you keep talking, I'm seriously gonna beat you up! Nagito, really, really not the killer. Nagito might be on to something. There's no way I'm capable of killing someone. Is that really true? Stop it already! That's enough. I can't stop. I don't want to do this either. Of course, I don't want to do this. But I need to do this. You, you doubt your friends? That's not it. I suspect them because I want to believe them. Well, what the hell does that mean? Um, I don't think belief and doubt are necessarily opposites. Huh? I do doubt her, but I still want to believe her. Belief lies at the heart of that conflict. Because if there's no room for doubt, then there's no reason to believe, is there? Don't say deep stuff. I don't really get it. If you want to believe in someone, you need to overcome doubt first. Belief without doubt is simply a lie. Fine. Do whatever you want. I won't stop you anymore. Thank you. Huh? Is that all you can say? Ah, so in the end... You're all just a bunch of bullies, huh? Justifying your actions with fancy words. <laughs> Making excuses for why it's not really your fault. <laughs> Everyone always treats me like that. <laughs> always. <laughs> it's all her fault. She's the one with the problem. <laughs> Mikan! It's not fair. It's not fair. 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 Why won't you forgive me? You forgive yourself right away! What did I do? Why won't anybody forgive me? Is acting like this your strategy now? This is annoying. 
us, to be honest, we've run out of ideas. And how can we get you to admit it? That's the issue. If we don't have any clues, why don't we have her give us some? Huh? I'm the same as Hajime. I don't want to doubt any of my friends. But still, the truth is one of us murdered two of our friends. We gotta stick with this until the very end, so we can finally break these chains of despair. Chiaki. Hey Nikon, can I ask you one last thing? If you're not the killer, then who fabricated that video Hajime watched? <laughs> like I said, it obviously wasn't me! Can you prove it? <laughs> prove it? Wait! Do you have any proof? You were the only person in the hospital. Ah, that's right. Show me your proof. <laughs> because you're just assuming the video was filmed at the conference room. Treating me like a killer based on an assumption. Just because I was at the hospital. <laughs> that's totally crazy. I did too many things wrong. Is this broad really okay? She's emotionally unstable. <laughs> I'm not the killer. I never filmed th 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 that video. Hmm. It seems she finally started arguing for us. Huh? But the only one who can find the hole in her argument is you, Hajime. So I'm going to leave this to you once again. That was Shiaki's goal all along. She's saying everyone's fate depends on me, the only person who saw Why that video. You get to decide I'm the killer? Where's your proof? Please Shut up! I need to make up my mind. I'm the one who has to do it. I'm the one who's gonna finish this off. Think of anybody else other than you who could have filmed that video. Oh, do you have any proof? Is the hemp bag on her head the proof? Is the hospital gown she was wearing suspicious? Or could it be the hospital slippers she had on? Ibuki and Mikon clearly have different body types. Is that really your proof? You could tell her body type under the hospital gown? Just from that video? Just from that camera angle? Just from that dim candlelight? There's no way you'd be able to make out her body type! So please forgive me already! Hajime, pay close attention and listen well. You're the only one who can point out the killer's mistake. Maybe I gotta like... I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to rewind. Shut up! I f cause I f well, yo! Just from that camera angle. I'll shoot through that contradiction. Mikan, you've committed a major mistake. Mistake? As I said before many times, I'm the only one who saw that video. How do you know the camera angle? How do you know that we wouldn't be able to tell from the camera angle? Yeah, I got you figured out. But I never said anything about the camera angle. Exactly. So how can you say anything about the camera angle as if you saw that video yourself? The only reason me can the camera angle Hajime had seen is because you're the person who actually filmed that video. Is that right? This is your just reward. The more desperately you argue, the deeper you dig yourself into a hole. You lied, didn't you? Oh. Are 
you serious? Is it true, Mikan? Did you... Did you kill Hiyoko and Ibuki? Thought the beat was gonna drop. Wrong, wrong. No, no, that's not it at all. That's not it. I mean, it's impossible. Impossible. You know that hemp bag Ibuki was wearing when she died. Try remembering the tote bag instead. Ding! I totally remember now. What the heck's wrong with her? She's getting weirder by the minute. That tote bag. Isn't it the same one that girl was wearing in the video? How did you know so much about that video? <laughs> Who cares about that? More importantly, did you know that bag is a limited item that was sold at the movie theater? Hajime saw it too, didn't you? You remember the Usami decal on it, right? Whoopsie! Don't worry about it. I remember even if you don't. Ta-da! There's no mistake that that tote bag is a limited item. So don't you think it's impossible? Using one tote bag in both the conference room and the music venue at the same time? It's blatantly obvious that that's impossible. Don't you think? That's why that video isn't fabricated. And I'm not the killer. So you'll forgive me, right? Taking your stubbornness this far. Such despair. Then you're gonna forgive me? I won't stop until you forgive me! Long time no see. Well, not really. Time for the third panic talk action. My last job during the class trial. If you see me while I taint your ears one more time. Oh my goodness, now we gotta do reloads. What was it? I'll keep explaining to you, forgive me, that bag is a limited time item. Why the crime is impossible for anyone to pull off? This chest, <coughs> has she lost it for good? Will you forgive me? You'll forgive me, right? Isn't that right? You're obviously gonna forgive me, right? At this rate, we're not getting anywhere. We gotta do something and end this. I gotta do something so I can make her admit it. You still haven't forgiven me. So die! 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 die. On me. There's only one bag. It's impossible to use in two places at This is the end! Shut up! Mentioned this earlier. When you buy one bag, you get another one free. It's a common practice to bait customers with bonus prizes. Whoever bought that bag should have received another one as a bonus prize. Which means it's not impossible to use that bag in two separate places. So please, just stop making desperate excuses. It's already over. After I go over your crime from the beginning and show that you have no arguments left, please just admit it already. In the end, at least let me believe in you. that happened in this case the key to this incident is the surveillance camera video that only i saw that's why i'm going to start with that to unravel the knots of this crime when i went to the hospital with mikan this morning i noticed a specific thing in the lobby the incoming signal light on the surveillance monitor was blinking ahead of the scheduled time 
When I switched on the monitor, what appeared on screen was a person wearing a hospital gown and a bag on their head about to hang themselves right at that moment. That surveillance camera unit was designed for two-way communication with the hospital and the music video. That's why I thought the signal originated from the music video. So I immediately headed over there. But that was the killer's trap. In truth, that video was recorded in a different place. The killer brought the music venue camera the night before and made their preparations in advance. And then, they filmed that video in the hospital conference room. By doing so, they tried to make me think the incident was happening in real time, when in fact, the crime had already been committed by that point. The person in the footage wearing the bag was actually the killer acting as a fake. I didn't know that, so I went to the music video and found the hanged body wearing a bag on its head. Seeing the body before me, I panicked and rushed out of there to get the rest of you guys. But that was also part of the killer's trap. After cleaning the conference room, the killer was likely watching the music video from outside. And as if they were switching places with me, they went inside the music video and began working on their last trick. First, the killer peeled off the wallpaper covering one of the stage pillars, revealing Hyoko's body. When I first arrived and saw the hanged body, I didn't notice anything strange about that pillar. I didn't expect it to be slightly larger from the wallpaper or have Hyoko's body hidden inside. Next, the killer destroyed the surveillance camera that was used in the conference room. After destroying it, they mixed it with what was left of the surveillance monitor found at the crime scene. The surveillance camera the killer used was originally brought from the music video, but when they brought it, they made sure to destroy its monitor beforehand. They wanted to hide the fact that the camera wasn't at the crime scene. In the end, the killer transformed the crime scene into a closed room. They broke one of the drumsticks from the storage room and placed it near the music venue's entrance. However, they did this to mislead us into believing that the music venue was locked from the inside. In actuality, the reason the music venue became a closed room was because of the glue. The killer sealed the door with glue and intentionally created a closed room that could be forced open. With that, the killer finished tampering with the crime scene and met up with Fuyuhiko. They helped us force open the music venue door, despite the fact that they personally sealed it. They made us discover not just Ibuki's body, but Hyoko's suddenly present body as well. At the time, they pretended to be surprised, but inside, they were probably relieved that their plan worked out. Isn't that right, Mikan? This crime was orchestrated by you, wasn't it? <laughs> Whoa! N now she's laughing? It's been such a long time. This feeling, I know it well. Like the floor is collapsing. Like the sky is falling down upon you. This feeling of despair! M Mikon, you... What has happened to you? Whoa there! Before that, a moment of your time. Wait, what? It seems your arguments have reached the conclusion. So let's proceed to our regularly scheduled voting time. Now then, please pull the lever in front of you and cast your vote. Who will be chosen as the blackened? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? Let's go! Well 
well now. Now then, though it may be obvious at this point, Correct. you got it right once again. That's like three in a row. That's right. The true identity of the horrifying black and who killed two girls is Mikan Tsumiki. Damn it. You gotta be kidding me. Are you saying Mikan? The one who nursed us back to health was the one who killed them? I won't forgive you. Don't joke around with me, Mikan. Did you lie to us all along? Were you planning to kill them from the start while you were nursing them? <laughs> Don't just laugh, say something. This is going nowhere. <laughs> This chick. Hey, hey. This is nothing like Pekko. She's actually gone mental. That's obvious. There's nothing we can do. She's no longer the same person. She's no longer the Mikan Sumiki we knew. Huh? Hey. Based on my prediction, she might have caught it too. She probably had the despair disease, which was the motive for this case. What? Mikan, you say? I. I know because I was looking at Mikan for so long. She was the one taking care of me, after all. My consciousness kept drifting, but even so, when I catch a glimpse of her, her expression was... Full of despair. A despair so devoid of hope that not even a single fragment of it remained. Hold on, did you say... Mikan also had the despair disease? Then that means she was... What? Huh, Hajime? Has something crossed your mind? My body's heavy. No, not just heavy, it's somewhat soft and really hot. That's right. Mikan felt really hot at that time. Now that I think about it, that must have been a high fever, just like what Ibuki and Akane had. It cannot be. Then the cause of that disease, Mikan was... Perhaps? The symptoms that she surely felt must have been deserving of the name despair disease. Losing all hope and harboring despair for all hope. Because of the despair disease, she was likely overcome with despair. See? That's the reason why she can still laugh in such a hopeless situation. <laughs> Dang. Jeez. Which means that me condescending before me, us is no longer the ultimate despair. Ultimate nurse. She's a completely different person now that she's affected by the despair disease. Isn't that right? She's a human who deserves to be called the ultimate despair. Monokuma, you got something to say about that? Ultimate despair. <laughs> Monokuma, you got beef with that? You, you don't got no beef with that right there? Like, so, like she, she really taking your title for real. She stole your flow. I... That's the reason why I cannot forgive this. I mean, killing someone for the sake of despair instead of for the sake of hope. Possible. There's no way I can forgive that. Oh? For the sake of despair. Ah, oh, that's completely wrong. Huh? Wrong. Wrong. What's wrong? What I did was for the sake of my beloved. Huh? Huh? Who, who are you talking about? <laughs> if only they were still alive, they'd be so happy. I know. My beloved was the only one. That's right. The only one who never hated me. They forgave my existence. They forgave me and accepted me. They gave me value. They loved me. I loved them with all my heart, and they returned it in full. This is my reciprocation. <laughs> I understand that what I've done, I've done something unforgivable. But you know, but you know, to transcend all that is truly love. what love is all about. Hey. I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> well, you don't you don't understand? Is it because you don't have anyone to love? Is it because you're also someone who isn't accepted by anyone? <sighs> what a pity. I feel sorry for you. Well. Even if I say this, I'm sure nobody here would understand, but love is a wonderful thing. Ah, oh, this feeling of freedom where you can no longer care about anything. <laughs> My beloved and I are the only ones within that thin veil. And I'm just looking out through it. <laughs> That's why, as long as I'm on the inside, no matter how much they tease me, splash me with water, kick me. Oh, how it's, it's like nothing matters. I could just die. That's how little it matters. 
Who cares about hope and despair? It's love, only love. Could it be? Nagito, is this the disparities you were talking about? This is. It seems that I was wrong. Not only was she defected by despair. <sighs> you were half right. It's right to say this is all thanks to that disease. Because thanks to that disease, I was able to remember my beloved. Remember. <laughs> Apparently, that's what my symptom was. What a wonderful symptom. Which means you had the remembering disease. But, but if this means she remembered something and ended up like this. Such despair. Are you saying you would like this from the start? You would like it before you even came to this island? <laughs> Don't get so angry. Well, first of all, the reason I became like this is it wasn't my fault. It was your fault, you know? Because it's not like I'm entirely responsible for turning out like this. I'm the person I am today because of many human relationships. So it was everybody's fault that I turned out like this, you see? <laughs> Even so, the current me was most strongly influenced by my beloved's existence. And it was also my beloved who created the me that everyone can't forgive. But my beloved still forgives me and accepts me. That is the key difference between all of you and my beloved. Don't fuck with me! What are you talking? Who are you talking about? <laughs> are you saying this is Mikan? She is the real Mikan? Mikan, please answer me. Did you really remember? You ended up like this all because you remembered? There's no way I can believe that. There's no way the person you are right now is the real Mikan. <laughs> oh, you still doubt me? Then to prove I remember, I'll tell you something nice. <laughs> it's all about that world and the organization that you all were worrying about. Are you serious? <laughs> Not no, I just remembered, that's all. I knew about it all along. How How that horrifying organization known as World Ender is also the organization known as the Future Foundation. Future Foundation. Future. That's right. That symbol on the ancient ruins door. That's right. It was a Japanese word for future. Hey. Just what is the Future Foundation? What are they planning? <sighs> As the name suggests, that organization is the world ender. The Future Foundation is trying to end our world. To put it simply, they're trying to claim the world for themselves. What the heck? This isn't a comic book, you know? <laughs> As part of their plan to end the world, the Future Foundation brought us to this island. Hmm. Isn't that right, Monami? I knew it. Monami, Monokuma. They're both members of that crazy organization, aren't they? <laughs> Monami and I aren't members. I am Monokuma! My existence is entirely my own. <laughs> Don't laugh. Hey, Mikan, if you really do remember, then you already know, right? You know the true identity of the traitor hiding among us? <laughs> of course I know that. Let's see. The future foundation lackey that's hiding among you all is... Uh -huh. Oh, well, no one really cares about that, don't you think? Of course not. <laughs> You'll find that eventually, so there's no need to be so impatient. Probably when that countdown ends. Countdown? You even know about that? Uh -huh. I don't know anything. Huh? I have a feeling that's what it is, but... Who cares about that, you know? <laughs> I'm drowning in so much love from the bottom of my heart. I just don't care about anyone or anything. That is. Mikan, is this really you? I won't believe it. There's no way I can believe you were like this all along. Because if that's true, then who's the person we've been spending so much time with up until now? <laughs> the past. Past. That person, she didn't exist in the beginning. She's just my past self who lost her school memories. <laughs> you guys consider that thing a friend? Oh? That doesn't make me happy at all. It just fills me with despair. You guys accepted my past self, but not my present self. That's... Well... Well, that applies to you all as well. Memories of people, memories of events, whatever memory it is, losing memories are... Do you understand? Like losing your personal identity. Memory is the most important component in building a person, don't you think? Losing our memories makes us shadows of the past, don't you think? Hey. I don't know what you're trying to say, but... In the end, it always leads back to that story. The story about our school lives. Hey, hey! So it was true all along, our memories were taken. Damn it! 
if that wasn't true, you wouldn't be suffering so much. Well, don't you try to... Well, don't you just try to take your sweet... Well, don't you just take your sweet time and remember at your own pace. Oh, Monokuma, is it all right for you to start now? Yes, indeed. Punishment time? Dang it, why? Mikan, why does it have to end like this? This is too pointless. This is too much. Now then, I've prepared a very special punishment. For the ultimate nurse, Mikan Sumiki. So it's over. It's really. Now I can go to my beloved, who always forgives me. I can finally see them. Please forgive me. The one who's going to die with the hope of finally seeing you. Let's give it everything we've got! It's punishment time! Okay. It's finished. Is it really finished? The killer who killed Ibuki Miyoda and Hiyoko Sayanji was Mikan Sumiki. And she's been executed. She apparently committed a crime because she was afflicted by the despair disease. So what? What's finished? Nobody wanted it to end this way. Let me ask. Who was that Mikan from earlier? Was that her true form? Or is that itself a symptom of the despair disease? It doesn't matter either way. If she ended up like that just from remembering, then all along, Mikan was never worth being a symbol of hope. But... Even if her words were influenced by the despair disease, if the disease turned her into that, if she lost herself to a simple disease, she was definitely unworthy of being a symbol of hope. Isn't that right? So, let's just move on. <laughs> Come on, let's take all this despair and change it into hope. Please wait! That is impossible! Uh, I mean, I thought we were friends this whole time, but even so. Like a house of cars collapsing in on an instant. In the end, our friend, our friend we thought we knew ended up showing us a completely different side of herself. Then she vanished from our sight, leaving behind only her malice towards us. And now there's no way we can just move on or try to have a clear-cut attitude about these feelings. That's clearly impossible. Damn it! It would have been so much easier if she was the traitor, too. Wrong! Too bad that's not the case. Mikan was not the traitor. Come on! The traitor is still alive. As proof, see how fine Monami looks right now? <laughs> I'm not fine at all. Hmm? But if the traitor died, you wouldn't be this calm, right? I mean... You're both pawns of the Future Foundation, so you guys are like two hearts beating as one, right? You fiend. What does that make you, fiend? You did say you're different than Monami. Phew. Who cares about who I am? More importantly, I'm tired. The drama just kept going and going. I didn't even have time to eat my black bean right eye during the break. Hey. Your right eye is made out of black beans? Hey, hey. Wait, now's not the time to focus on that. What are you trying to say? Um... You know, isn't it said that life has its ups and downs? It's fun because up downs come after the ups. But if life is full of downs, wouldn't that get boring? Yeah. <laughs> so in order to help you guys feel better, I've prepared a special event. Special event? <laughs> Head over to the I first island's beach. An old friend will be waiting there. Old friend? Huh? Could it be Nekomaru? Hey! Is it? Is it? 
Is it? It is, isn't it? Nakamura was safe after all. Hmm. Safe? How should I say this? <laughs> I knew it. I knew that crazy bastard Nakamura would come back to us in one piece. <laughs> awesome. We're starting to see the light of hope. Um. The light of hope. I am happy Nakamura is returning to us, but... But I... So just as I thought. Three of our friends just died, so I honestly cannot be happy. Hmm. Miss Sonya. However... Even so, I am still happy. If Nakamura was safe, I am truly happy. Sorry. If you were happy, then you should greet him with open arms. Perhaps those who have been taken from us would do the same if they still lived. Huh. Hey, Supreme Overlord of who gives a crap. That line doesn't suit you at all. Silence. I shall crush you to dust. Um. Ibuki Hiyoko Mikan, can you hear us? If you are unhappy, I apologize. However, please forgive me for right now. I want to warmly welcome Nekomara when he returns to us. You don't have to worry, Sonya. I'm sure their feelings are reaching them. Your right. feelings. Then let's all go greet Nekomaru. Let's make it grand, even for those who have died. <laughs> what, what the heck? Do I still have the after effects of that disease? I don't get this at all. Akane. All right. Let's go. Yeah, you're right. Nekomaru's coming back when we heard that. We were able, unable to contain our excitement as we jumped into the elevator. Man, they just ran off without listening to what I had to say. Unbelievable. Jeez, they're so impatient. Didn't they learn to stick around until others have finished talking? Um. What does that mean? Hey. You're plotting for something again, aren't you? No way. I'm not plotting anything. I was just trying to properly explain everything to them, including Nekomaru's body. Hmm? Nekomaru's body. <laughs> it's their fault for not sticking around until I finish talking. <laughs> So if something happens because of, happens because of that, I bear no responsibility. <laughs> what did you do to Nekomaru? What's this? What did I do? I just saved him, that's all. I mean, if I didn't do that, there's no way I could have saved someone who was that close to death. So it just couldn't be helped. <laughs> as soon as we exited the elevator, we started running. Hurry right, to the beach on the first island. Right. Even though our minds were completely exhausted, strangely enough, our bodies felt light. Without stopping for anything, we kept we kept right on running toward the beach on the first island. Where? Where in the world is Nekomaru? Hey. Hey, Nekomaru, show yourself. Listen. We have come to pick you up. Please hurry up and come out of hiding. We raised our voices. We looked around the sea. We raised our voices again. We looked around the area again. So on and so forth. We kept looking for him, but... Hey, hey. What the, what the hell? Man, he's nowhere to be found. Damn it. Could it be? Did we get false info from Monokuma again? And that's when it happened. We heard a familiar voice echo throughout the beach. <laughs> what happened? Were y'all looking for me? Could it be? With high hopes in our hearts, we turned to the direction of the voice. Then we saw something truly unbelievable. Huh? What the? Yo! I've kept you waiting. Hey, what's going on? Perhaps you don't remember my face since we haven't seen each other in a while. That's pretty sad, you know? That's too much! <laughs> um, who are you? Huh? You too? What's going on? If you're messing with me, I'll stop doing it to you. Um, Nekomaru? Haven't you noticed it yourself? What do you mean, noticed? Oh, you mean this body? <laughs> this is nothing! The name's Nekomaru Nijai! I've been reborn in the rivers of hell! <laughs> He's a robot now?
We're not moving on. That's the end of this episode, guys. I hope y'all enjoyed. Like, subscribe. Wait, hold on. I said that wrong. That's the end of this episode, guys. I hope y'all enjoyed. That was freaking crazy. What the heck? Dude. Bro. I didn't expect it to be Mikan. I'm not gonna lie. I did doubt her a little bit. Because, like, I mean, she was the only one with access to Ibuki. I felt like maybe she would have lied about... Maybe she, like, I, I, I kind of thought like, hey, she might have tricked me into not going in to check on Ibuki in the, during that, during before the investigation and stuff, because that was the plan and all that. She didn't want us to find out too early. I was thinking stuff like that, but I never actually thought it would be Mikan. But a lot of stuff makes sense now that we know it was her. That was crazy. Um, I hope y'all enjoy. Peace out. I love y'all. Um, tap into the next episode if y'all enjoy it. Like, subscribe. Y'all already know. Come on. Rock with your boy.